Thank you for being a friend. Here's your look at the NECA Toys, the Golden Girls Retro Cloth Figures. Rose, Blanche, Dorothy, and Sophia are four seniors living in Miami, sharing a house, their dreams, and a whole lot of cheesecake. Bright, promiscuous, clueless, and hilarious, these lovely mismatched ladies form the perfect circle of friends. Complete your collection with all the girls. Now, I'm not ashamed to say I hope it always will stay this way, at least using a tape measure to figure out how tall these figures stand. Starting first with the tallest, we're going to work our way down. You'll actually see that in this case, Blanche and Rose seem to be the same sized figures, so we're not really going to get the measurements going for both of them. Starting first with the tallest, we're going to go ahead and start with Dorothy. According to the readout, Dorothy is 8.3 inches in height. We can switch that quickly over to centimeters, revealing that the figure is 21.2 centimeters tall. We'll switch that back, switch this back to inches, and then we'll go ahead and do the exact same thing then with Rose. Now again, Rose and Blanche will be the exact same figure. The only thing that's going to be different in them is their footwear and the different sculpted heads. So these figures are 7.6 inches in height. Switching that over to, again to centimeters, the figures are 19.4 centimeters tall. And last and certainly not least, going down to the smallest, Sophia. I'm going to take the tape measure right to the very top of her head. And we're going to get a calculation of 6.9 inches in height. And once, lastly, switching it over to centimeters, the figure is 17.5 or 17.5 centimeters tall. Sadly for the girls, why am I whispering? Sadly for the girls, the only figure that comes included with any accessories is little tiny Sophia here on the end. Even though technically by order, we're going to be looking at her last. The least I could do is show you guys the accessories that come included with her because, again, she's the only one that comes with anything. So the first thing we're going to have a look at is Sophia's little tiny handbag. Nice woven handbag with pearls done for the handles here. And a dry brushing of brown just so nicely brings out those details. The handbag does open up. Oh, and there's a little bit of gold there also on the top. But it opens up by just getting your fingers in there. Ah, there we go, and opening it up. I exaggerated that a lot more than really what it was. Inside, even though there is space to really hold something, there is nothing that includes inside the bag. Maybe perhaps it could have been pictures, old stories of Sicily, I don't know. Sadly, there's nothing that actually comes inside the bag, the purse. Close that up, put that to the side. And of course... These golden girls love themselves cheesecake. Judging by the look of the cheesecake, I feel it may have sat in the oven just a little too long, but a few minutes maybe too long. You can see what they've done here. They've molded the cake to the plate. There's a plate right there. And then atop it, they've brushed what would be the golden edge of the cheesecake here. I don't, Oh, did the Golden Girls ever put anything on top of their cheesecake? I'm always one that likes cherries on top of my cheesecake. What is your favorite toppings on top of cheesecake? Let me know down below in the comment section. Are we actually going to have that discussion? Yes, we are. What's your favorite topping on top of a cheesecake? So those are the only things that sadly come included with the girls, whispering no longer. We're going to start first here. Then here, then we're going to go here, then basically we're going to get to the very end. Starting first with the tallest, we're going to be having a look at Dorothy. I can assure you as well, the reason why we're looking at Dorothy has nothing to do with the fact I had a small, just a little tiny crush on B. Arthur. And we're not even talking when I was growing up. I'm talking like in my 20s. I don't know, there was something about B. Arthur that did it for me. I don't know. It's very strange. The figure itself, as you'll see, I mean, she's quite a bit taller when you put her up against the rest of the girls. She's maybe about a half a foot taller. Somewhat rather alarming, actually, when you look at the body build here of her. But we'll look at that in a second. For the face sculpt, not only Dorothy, but really all the Golden Girls have really good looking head sculpts. I mean, I see that. I know exactly who, what character that is, what actress played this character. The only thing I probably could have said is I would have appreciated if they had made the hair just a little bit more curlier on the outside. This is kind of like earlier season Dorothy, I feel, in, earlier into the show, where later into the show she kind of got a kind of more of a poofier hairstyle. But it's a nice head sculpt, I will say. Short of, unfortunately, just a little bit of scuffing I've got on the end of the nose. I don't know how it got there, but I'm sad and disappointed the fact that, considering what B. Arthur did for me, 
the fact that she would have a little bit of scuffing on the end of her nose like that. Now, as for the rest of her outfit, she has kind of this, I don't know what you would call this. Would this be a, this wouldn't be a shawl. I guess it would just be like a jacket. It's done of a more of a silk material. You can see the stitching on the interior of it and a nice pattern on the outside. And then underneath that, she only has sleeveless. Well, she has a sleeveless shirt underneath that, as you can see, has a little tie on the top there as well. Now, the reason why I will alarm you a little bit here is by the build of Dorothy. All the other figures, at least from the four that we're going to be looking at here, all feature female body builds. When it comes to Dorothy, she's a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and just open up the Velcro, and not to alarm anybody that when I do this, opening it up and on the inside, you'll see there's some additional padding that they've afforded Dorothy, but you can also see she's got a muscular man's body underneath that. Some would actually say that this is what B. Arthur's body did, in fact, look like underneath. She worked out regularly. That's not really true. Let's go ahead and just do that up so we don't have any more nightmares about the whole matter. As for her lower legs, she's got a similar style of material for the lower pants. It's not quite the same, obviously, color as this, but the pattern work that they've speckled across her jacket does blend in rather nice to the coloring of her pants. And like I said, it's more like a silk variety. Now, unfortunately, these figures only have the single hinges on their ankles. So she, they, she doesn't have like the double hinge or the hinge joint in the ankles like the newer retro cloth figures have. Unfortunately, Dorothy is pretty much only relegated to having her feet hinging back and forth like this. Speaking of her articulation, for the articulation here on B. Arthur, her head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and it hinges down and all the same stuff that you would expect to see in a retro cloth figure. You probably also will see, astute viewers of mine, that the coloring of the neck, yes, isn't quite the same coloring as the rest of her face. Oh, I just wish that she didn't have so much scuffing across her face. Of all the characters, it had to be, it had to be Dorothy. Anyways, for her arms, the arms hinge out quite comfortably at a 90 degree angle. This one arm is tight. I have been trying my best to loosen it up a bit. I May even just try to take the jacket off and heat that up a little bit with a hairdryer, see if I can loosen the joint up a little bit. But if not for that, the figure would be able to bend at a 90 degree angle bend. I'm probably not going to do that with every single figure because the build is a little bit different. <laughs> Again, drawing your attention to the fact she's got a muscular body. But like all the rest of the articulation is going to be pretty much the same on these figures. The arms hinge forward, the arms hinge back. She only has a single hinge on the elbow. So unfortunately, while she does certainly want to slap Rose across the face, you can't really get a double hinge on the elbow. You only can get a single hinge. And of course, the hands, though not quite the same color as the rest of her arms, can rotate all the way around. And you can also hinge them back and forth. You can also see they painted in some nice nail polish there across the four fingers and also to the thumb as well. For the waist, it swivels only back and forth. She doesn't have an upper torso bulb joint because they're using the older bodies here. The legs split out. Quite a lot, actually. Moving forward and back on the legs, she does have a bend at the knee. And then she also does have the foot articulation as well. Again, I feel like it's my personal favorite of the four figures. Does anybody remember that award show where B. Arthur danced the Urkel with Steve Urkel up front? Boy, that was, that was embarrassing. Talk about cringe. But I'm really happy with the way that Dorothy looks. Unfortunately, because she is the taller of all the girls that we're going to be looking at in this review, some... I don't want to say sacrifices had to be made on NECA's part, but they ultimately had to use a man's body to give her the height that they did. It's okay if you don't open up her shirt. When you open up her shirt, yes, you can see that Dorothy is sporting a rather mean-looking six-pack. On to Rose next, very carefully picking her up not to knock down the other figures here. Betty White. Oh, Betty White. Still kicking it strong. I feel like she is, isn't she the last of the Golden Girls still alive? Which is kind of sad when you really think about that. She does have a very nice big smile across her face here. Again, the sculpting is really good on all of these figures. I mean, again, when I'm looking at this, I might even just say these Golden Girls have some of the best head sculpts we've gotten for retro cloth figures. Is that blasphemy for me to say that? Perhaps. Perhaps a little bit. But the face not only is good, but it's also painted quite well too. She has, of course, a dividing line between the two teeth. It gets a little gray here, unfortunately, on the tops and the bottoms of her teeth. Other than that, though, I really have no complaints at all with the head sculpt. Spin it around so the back, you can see the sculpting of the hair. Very nicely done. Now, her body, along with Blanche, and technically as well, Sophia, all are all using the female body build. I'm only going to open this up just to show you what the mold looks like underneath. 
And just to reveal, I mean, not that I really want to be showing you guys what Betty White looks like underneath her dress, but just to kind of give you guys an idea, I think it's the same body that they also used for Lori, for the Loomis and Lori two-pack. Why I did also show you guys that was only just to show you guys that they are using female bodies for these particular girls, or at least the ones from Dorothy, well, Rose onward. One of the downsides, unfortunately, because she doesn't have any additional padding, is that her dress sits really loose. She does have sort of makeshift shoulder pads, but there's no padding actually in there. It's just the way that they've sewn the dress. They've just allotted for a little bit more space in the shoulders. But the dress, yeah, unfortunately sits a little on the loose side. She does have somewhat pockets here on either side, and she also has the buttons from top all the way down to the bottom. Nails, again, painted in nicely there on the fingers as well as the thumb on both sides. That's usually how it works when you paint your nails. And then when it comes to the lower legs, again, I feel like she's using all the same body as Lori Strode. I think even like her shoes are the same as well. Unfortunately, again, limited when it comes to the articulation on the toes that we'll look at in a second. She's got a little bit of a scuffing there on the side of her leg. I don't know if that's something I could actually take off or not. This, I feel, has made many viewers happy that they've been asking for a Betty White review for the longest of times, and hopefully I've now met that quota. For the figure's articulation, let's rotate the head all the way around. Rotates all the way around, being that's on a ball joint, the head goes up, the head goes down somewhat and back and forth. I'm, I, I assure you, I am moving the figure. It may not even look like I am, but the head articulation is quite limited. I think a lot of it really has to do with the fact that the way they sculpted the back of her hair, it does really then limit what you can do with it. The arms work the same way as Dorothy's. No obstructions though, you can bring those arms quite easily out at 90 degrees, and again, forward and back. Same articulation, elbow, hand, hand. No waist, or no upper torso ball joint, but she does have the waist swivel. The legs again split out. She's gonna be a little bit more limited for obvious reasons. So just because of the dress, the length of the dress and how close the dress is to her legs. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do as much splits though. So her breaking out in dance numbers like she does in the show, you can't quite do that here. The legs can move forward and back and she does also have only a single hinge on the knee and then she does also have the single hinge in her foot. Consider, I'm sure, by at least the viewers watching this right now, some would say that Rose, Betty White, would be their personal favorite of the four figures. Let's move now on to Blanche. Moving now on to Blanche, and like the other two examples before her, no accessories whatsoever. I really think that, maybe if anything, Blanche should have included a little tiny phone book. She was always picking up and going out on dates with guys. You would have thought she could have included like some sort of phone book or something. Anyways, for the figure's makeup, I'm going to go ahead and go back to Rose here so you can see the difference between the two. Like It seems like the hands are exactly the same, the arms are exactly the same. The body, though this one is going to be hidden by the fact that she's got the top on, uh, is going to be the same body as uh, Dorth, as Rose here. Same exact. The only thing that is a diff different, really, between the two figures is that Blanche, as you can see, has a different type of shoe. These high heel shoes. Makes the figure have a little bit more difficulty when it comes to her standing upright. And then, of course, the head sculpts are things that change as well. Let's go ahead and put Rose back. By the way, also, if you're curious, the figures that we've looked at so far, both her and Dorothy, don't have pegles on the undersides of her feet. So they don't have too much of an issue standing. But like I said, when it comes to Blanche here, because her footprint is just a little bit smaller, she has to deal then with a the heel and only just a little bit on the front of her shoe here. She has a little bit more difficulty when it comes to her standing. Having a closer look at the head sculpt here. Is it Rue, Rue McClanahan, I think, was the one that played Blanche? She died, I feel, pretty early into when you're thinking of like all the characters that all the actresses that passed away in this in this series. I think she died pretty early into that. For the head sculpt again, nice looking head sculpt for Blanche. They've sculpted in a big smile on her face. I haven't really yet said this in this review, but I mean, Blanche, kind of a good example of this. These characters had so many different outfits in the show, especially Blanche, all the dates that she went out on. I don't know if they would consider, and I'm saying that directed towards NECA, whether they would re-release this set, of these four figures with different outfits. Now, up to the point of the updating where we are right now in this review, they are actually re-releasing these figures, but I think they're just re-releasing them in the regular outfits. I would really like to see them re-releasing them in uh, different outfits as well for those that were lucky enough to get the set the, in, the the first initial time. So again, not not really any any disappointing aspects when it comes to her head sculpt. Both the head as well as the paint job is really nice. She has a rather interesting hairstyle. Something I always took away when it, seeing Blanche on TV. 
The coloring actually, when you see her hair, a little bit darker down below and a little bit lighter of a chestnut color on the top there, kind of in a way, on you, when you see it from the back, it looks like she's got a mohawk. She does have, of course, the sculpting in earrings. All the figures actually we've looked at so far, I don't know if you've been taking notes, have all had earrings. Um, Dorothy had circular earrings. Uh, Rose, I think, had circular earrings as well. Blanche goes square. She's got square earrings there. Now, to her credit, actually, the paint that they used for her face seems to blend pretty good for the rest of her body. You see, like, the neck isn't that far off, actually. Again, I have no, no qualms whatsoever when it comes to head sculpts on these pieces. Now, she has quite a very lemon yellow colored outfit, both a jacket and, I guess, matching pants to that. The material, when you're looking at it up close like this, kind of reminds me of, like, a little chamois, like a little textured chamois that you'd be wiping your car. I wouldn't hope that I wouldn't be walking outside and seeing somebody wiping down their car with Blanche. Don't be doing that. Uh, she does have some pockets there on the front of her jacket, smaller pockets at the top there as well, and a button there just on the one side, even though you you can see um, they, they don't have, you can't attach the jacket together. As the couple of times I've already done this, you can probably also see as well that they've elasticized the inside of her jacket, so it gives her kind of this crimping when you're looking at it from the outside. She's got the rolled up sleeves, and again, when you're looking at her footwear, her feet are definitely different than the other two figures that we've looked at. The others have had flat feet, these ones, as you can see with Blanche, she's got more like, would you consider that a stiletto? I'm so behind when it comes to women's footwear. You can see again, she's painted in the toes. Most of the toe paint has been done pretty good. There's one wandering one over here. I don't know where it ended up going. But the paint on these figures for the most part is pretty good. Let's have a look at the articulation now on Blanche. Her head, I really noticed taking her out of the packaging was tight. It still is tight. It's loosened up a little bit. But there seems to be, like, resistance when I'm trying to move the head like this. Maybe it's because it knows rotating the head all the way around would probably kill the person in real life. It's just really tight. Really, really tight. But the head moves up. It moves down. Again, I can assure you I am actually doing something right now. It just moves very, very little. Um, up The arms, the arms, those are her arms, hinge out again at a 90-degree angle bend. You can bring the arms forward and again back and again, listing all the same stuff I listed before. Hands, waist, legs, forward, back, bend at the knee, single bend, single bend. And then when it comes to her feet, again, just that single hinge working here. Is there enough of a, a demand for these? I feel like there is because, of course, NECA is re-releasing these figures. These figures came out a couple of years ago, actually, and they're now re-releasing them. So, you know what? I, I, I'd, be all, I'd be all for the idea of releasing these figures down the road with different outfits because of course after all they've had different outfits in the cart in the not the cartoon in the series why not re-release them with a different outfit especially blanche because i would feel like blanche of all the girls that we looked at hey they kind of look like they're holding hands i feel like they could probably re-release these characters with different outfits am i the only one that's hoping that maybe maybe i'm maybe i'm the only one that wants that as I sit here thinking about the other outfits that NECA could be putting on these Golden Girl figures, I realized quickly I'm sitting here thinking about what other outfits could NECA toys be putting on retro cloth Golden Girl figures. Quickly abandoning that thought and moving on to the last figure of these four figures that we're going to be looking at is little tiny Sophia. Again, Sophia did come in clue with the accessories. We've already looked at those at the beginning of this review. The figure is also smaller, but she's got a misleading body going for her. In fact, let me show you what exactly I'm talking about. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to show you a little bit more skin than probably what is comfortable when it comes to Sophia. I'm going to just open up her dress for the time being. And it's only more educational purposes just to show you guys that when it comes to her body, her body, the top torso, is the same as both Rose and Blanche's. Um, what they've done, however, differently, let's just do that back up, keep decent at least. Here we go. The arms... The torso is the same as the other last two figures that we've looked at. Where things, however, go a little bit different. <laughs> this is so awkward. Bringing up her dress like this, you can see that they've shortened out the legs. Not only have they decreased the length of the lower leg, but they've also decreased the length of the top thigh area as well. So even though she technically has the same upper torso as both Rose and Blanche, the lower half of her, what really does shrink down Sophia's size. For her head sculpt here, played by Estelle Getty in the series, the hilarious actress. Ironically enough, Estelle Getty was one of the youngest actresses on the show Golden Girls. She just, of course, added the wig and, of course, gave her the glasses to make her look a little bit more older. 
Some, would you re some of you would recognize Estelle Getty from, of course, Golden Girls, the figures that we're looking at here. Some of you may also remember her from Stop or My Mom Will Shoot, a terrible Sylvester Stallone comedy, which at one point I did enjoy. Then I watched it later on and I thought to myself, what, what part of this did I actually enjoy? Sylvester Stallone really should stick away from, stay away from comedies. Oscar is another terrible one. But the head sculpt, though, is quite good here on Sophia. She, of course, does have the glasses on. They're not removable. I guess you could pry them off her face, but then I think you're like, why, why? Why would you want to do that? The hair, again, sculpted rather nicely. She unfortunately does suffer the same problem as not having the same skin tone as the rest of her body. You can see that they just used the regular stock plastic mold. Uh, for her dress, it sits sort of the same way as Rose, and because of that, it sits a little on the loose side. It's poofy, it's baggy, and if you don't have the, the Velcro properly laid over top of itself, you can see sometimes the Velcro sticking out, kind of peeking its way out. So nice buttons running down from the top of the collar all the way about, I guess, three quarters of the way down the figure. And of course, the dress does limit a little bit of the articulation, but not as much, surprisingly, as Rose. She seems to be able to break out in much better dances than Rose can in the show. Uh, for the articulation on Sophia, her head rotates all the way around. And similar again, I find the head is really tight on these figures. Some of them, at least. The head moves up. Again, I'm telling you, I am moving it. The head moves down. Promise, I am moving it. And again, back and forth. Arms hinge out. I know, again, all the same stuff I said before. Forward and back. Bend at the elbow. Hands, hands, waist, and then quite a quite a nice split on her legs. You can bring the legs forward, you can bring the legs back, single hinge on the knee, and then she also has the articulation in the ankle. So overall, good looking set. Now this set, I keep calling this a set in this in this review, but this set really isn't so much a set as the fact that these four figures were sold individually. Each one of them were sold individually. Each one of them had their own packaging. So really, it was a case where you had to track down every single one of the Golden Girls. Luckily, there was only four of them. They never released a Stanley. It would be kind of interesting if they released a Stanley. So there may have been cases at the time when these were coming out. Maybe people were more quick to pick up the Betty White figure and then leave, you know, Rue and B. Arthur. I don't know why anyone would really have left B. Arthur. That would have been the first one I would have picked up. Again, a little bit probably biased towards this, but... One good thing is if you missed your chance on getting the Golden Girls that first rotation, you'll be happy to know that NECA is planning, as already announced online, they are going to be re-releasing these figures. Basically just the same figures that we looked at in this review with the exact same outfits. And then again, I go back to that idea that I had disturbingly earlier. What other outfits could they have possibly put on the other Golden Girls? I, you know, again, I feel like they could release this set again and release them with different wardrobes. Then for the people that were lucky enough to get the set the first time, the four individual figures, then would have a reason to get this release again because they would have different outfits. But as far as I know, they are just going to be sending out the very same figures that we looked at in this review with the very same outfits. And that's fine for those that missed again their chance to get this, the, this lineup of four girls from the first release. Like with other releases that NECA toys do, there's going to be a second chance, a second opportunity for Golden Girls fans out there to pick up these figures and add them to their collection. The Retro Cloth Golden Girl figures from the folks over at NECA Toys, you'd be surprised to find out, was a highly requested video here on this channel. I can count at least on one hand how many viewers would come up to me, it seemed even on a daily basis, and asked when I was going to be having a look at the Retro Cloth Golden Girl figures. Surprisingly, more so rose. When are you going to have a look at the Betty White figure? When are you going to have a look at the Betty White figure? Well, we are having a look at the Betty White figure here as Rose from the Golden Girls, along with her three other friends. And of course, I'm sure if she threw a party, she'd invite everybody she knew. I could imagine the difficulty it would have been for a Golden Girls fan to go to the stores, because at one point, these weren't sold as a set. No, no, no. These were sold all individually, as you can see the packaging here for Rose here on the far right. You would have had to have gone to the store and individually found individually find each one of the golden girls could you imagine how awkward that would be to a fan going into the say a target going up to the clerk and saying excuse me i i can't help but notice you've got a sophia and you've got a, a blanche golden girl on the shelf do you please tell me you have a rose they quickly check their stock and they say well sorry actually we just sold six roses to a person that had come in earlier and picked them all up and they're like oh i just missed out i knew somebody would be coming in trying to get all those roses Luckily, though, some good news NECA has announced recently, and maybe one of the driving force behind why I want to finally have a look at these figures after all, having, having had these figures so long in my collection. 
was the fact that NECA have announced good news online that they are going to be re-releasing these figures. And again, I don't think they're going to be re-releasing them as a big master box set. I think that would have been fine. And maybe they could have thrown in a Stanley or thrown in a couple of other accessories or something, but I think they're still going to be releasing them individually. So it may still be difficult to finally track down that one Sophia. You have all the other three Golden Girls and you just, you keep calling around to the stores, tell me you have Sophia. And they're like, who is this? Neke, like I said, is going to be re-releasing these, so some, that is that, that is really good news for Golden Girl fans out there. But I would say this to Neca Toys, if you would be so kind for us Golden Girl fans, please don't end the line just with re-releasing these figures. Maybe consider the idea of re-releasing them anyways with different outfits. Because after all, for those that were able to get these figures the first time, I think we'd be pretty open to the idea of getting the figures again. Even even if Dorothy has a big man torso going for her, but at least getting the figures again if they have different outfits on it. Please, Neca, please consider that. What do you guys think of the Retro Cloth Golden Girls? Let me know down below in the comments section. And for your video question for today, who was your favorite Golden Girl? You probably already know mine because I've stated already several times in this review. I had a big crush on B. Arthur. Why did I have a crush on B. Arthur? <sighs> I don't know. I don't have an answer for that question. But who is your favorite golden girl? Let me know down below in the comment section. If you guys are also new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, loved also the golden girls growing up, then make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that you turn on the bell notification and that, yes, you're making sure you're coming back to this channel regularly. We may not be looking at any other golden girls or other Betty White figures. I don't think there's been another Betty White figure. Somebody's going to be typing down below. And actually, just FYI, Humboldt Reviewer. Thank you for calling me Humboldt Reviewer. There was a Betty White figure that was released four years ago. And then a quick, my search then will continue to find that elusive Betty White figure. But make sure, yes, you're hitting that bell notification. Make sure you're coming back to this channel because there's definitely going to be a lot more videos coming your way. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.